I'd like to talk about the Electoral Count Act. Um, there were five particular proposals that we were looking at, and the first one um, was very simple. No one had further discussion. Uh, there was full consensus that the vice presidential role is symbolic and that it was simply a matter of procedure. Uh, no one felt that one person should ever have the ability to overturn an election. So in numbers two through five, we had a mix of interest in delving deeper with that, but the most interest was at the state legislature level and ensuring that a state legislature did not overturn the will of the people in their election. While we feel that there need to be limitations on how they do that, there also needs to be some degree of flexibility because we can't predict everything that might happen in the future. So the proposal, um, as it stands regarding um, only for, for sub substantive issues that regarding a major catastrophe of some kind, a natural disaster of some kind, seems to make sense. Um, but there was just a little bit of concern about how we can make sure that if something else happened, is that going to be covered or is it going to be problematic? In general, I think that the agreement was the courts could probably handle anything. And in that regards, there was support at the state level for courts to be able to uh, resolve any election concerns or issues. And that was uh, item number four, I believe. So anything that's already been decided at the courts, and it should be decided before it goes to Congress, those uh, rulings will hold at the congressional level, and there could be no objection in Congress due to something that had already been decided in the courts. One matter was brought to my attention that I hadn't thought of before, and that others also thought was worthy of consideration. What happens when a case is dismissed by the courts because it wasn't brought to their attention by the right person? I forget the exact terminology that was used, but essentially that there are certain agents who have the ability to bring a case and sometimes the case will be dismissed because the person who brought it doesn't have the authority to do that. What they wanted to happen and there was no provision for is that it would be directed to somebody who could do that, who could bring the case forward so that it would get resolved and there would be a decision in the court and not just simply a dismissal. If that doesn't happen, the question is when it gets to Congress, would Congress be able to use an objection for something that had been dismissed in the courts as opposed to something that had a ruling and a decision? Uh, clarification was needed on that somehow. Part of it would be answered by restricting what objections Congress can actually bring. And there was support for the proposal of it had to be something so egregious that was not followed in the state laws to produce uh, a result of integrity that there would be so many people objecting that it wouldn't be just one person in the House and one in the Senate. So they also supported raising the threshold for objections in Congress. So it had to be the limited reasons as well as a higher threshold. And there was support for that across the board. 